Welcome, everybody. Hi, welcome to the 40th annual Congressional Art Competition for high school students. Uh, my name is Rebecca Ellis, and I'm the State Director for Congressman Peter Welch. And we will have five speakers lined up for today's event. Um, Congressman Welch will provide the opening remarks. Leslie Ward, the president of the Vermont College of Fine Arts will announce the honorable mention winners. And then our three Vermont artist judges, Susan Teer, Colin Bright and Vanessa Compton will announce the third, second and first place winners in that order. And so I would now like to invite Congressman Welch to provide opening remarks. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, doing our COVID uh, uh, re safe Zoom uh, the Council of Fine Arts uh, visit where we're all virtual. I, I don't even know what to say because I normally uh, am so excited about being uh, at, the, at, at the Vermont College of Fine Arts where they have that magnificent uh, display uh, in that wonderful uh, room that they have upstairs, but it's great to be with everyone on our virtual uh, event. And you know, a couple of things that I'm really excited about, despite uh, this COVID world that we're in and we're starting to come out of, uh, we did manage to put this all online. Uh, so that's good. Number two, incredible par participation, 160 students from across the state. Uh, and number three, uh, we're going to be able to have everyone's artwork on our website that will go live uh, once we finish with the award ceremony. Uh, I want to thank some people, but first of all, I really, really want to thank the Vermont Council in Fine Arts for, for hosting us. <clears throat> and you might think that it wasn't as much work for them to host us uh, this year when we're doing it uh, by Zoom as opposed to physically. But in fact, uh, Karen Middleman and Troy Hickman did an immense amount of work uh, setting up this portal that allowed us uh, to have this event today. So thank you, Vermont Council on Fine Arts. Um, I also want to uh, thank, uh, that's Jericho Parms who really did the heavy, heavy, heavy lifting uh, to make this happen, an immense amount of work. And you did that uh, really for all the Vermont artists, uh, these young students who are participating today and uh, submitted those 160 pieces of art. So thank you, uh, Jessica. And also thank you, Leslie Ward, uh, for making everything available for the Vermont Council on, on the Arts. I wanna thank our, uh, our artists uh, who were the judges. And that's a hard, hard job. And I always enjoy listening to the artists talk about how they see and assess uh, the work that they uh, have viewed and uh, are giving award, awards to. And that's uh, uh, our, our artists are uh, Susan Teer, uh, Colin Bright, uh, Vanessa Compton, and all the very accomplished Vermont artists. Um, uh, we have a few uh, guests uh, on the call, including uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Jill Kerwinski. I'm going to ask her to just say a word or two, uh, but also uh, a couple of other uh, state legislators who are big supporters of the arts, uh, Kathy James and Seth Bongarts. Uh, before I ask uh, Jill to just make a quick remark, I want to say why it's so, this program is so important to me and I feel uh, such pride that I've been able to pick up the legacy that was started by my predecessor or one of my predecessors uh, in Congress. And it was Senator Jim Jeffords, who at the time he began this was Congressman Jim Jeffords. And when I first came to Vermont, it was after I graduated from law school, Jim Jeffords was our Congressman. And I was a big fan and admirer of his. Uh, and he was a a, a, a extraordinarily a wonderful uh, member of Congress, uh, both when he served as a member of the House and also later as a U.S. Senator. But he began the Congressional Arts Competition. And it was an idea that was born out of the Vermont Arts Council and just the enormous support that uh, Vermonters have for the importance of the arts. And this 
uh, which began as a contest in Vermont. Really, I use the word contest, but it really was an opportunity for uh, to encourage Vermont high school students to uh, to express themselves through the artistic skills and vision that they had. That this just spread all around the country, and what is now the case is that all of my colleagues in 435 House congressional districts uh, have an arts competition where the students in their districts are uh, invited to submit their work, have it be judged, uh, and uh, then winners are selected. And then each district gets a winner and the work is then displayed on a hallway uh, that goes from the house office buildings over to the Capitol itself. And one of the wonderful uh, joys I have uh, in my work is that when I'm walking from my office over to the Capitol, uh, usually uh, to cast a vote, I go through this hallway and see on display uh, the 435 works uh, from all across uh, uh, of the country. And I have a habit of stopping along the way uh, each time to, to pay a special attention to a particular work of art. And uh, it's, it's just a, a it, it's really a wonderful experience for me. The other thing I wanted to say is that, and this is really to the artists, to the students, uh, I was not good at expressing myself <clears throat> artistically and I'm still not. And I think one of the, one of the things that I had trouble with when even I was trying to start to do something like that when I was in grammar school or high school is I was afraid to um, let people see my work and to be judged. And it's an aspect of you submitting your work and letting other people see it and to talk about it and to have the confidence that you can have a display of your work, your effort, your heart, something that's meaningful to you and let others uh, have a critical response to it. And it's critical not in the sense of it's you know good or bad. It's critical in a sense of assessing it and then discussing with you how, what's your vision? Discussing with you, how did you execute on that? And then being open to getting uh, feedback from people who've had experience about your execution, your skill, and how to improve it. So it's a very brave emotional step to take to be an artist and then display your work uh, so that the public uh, can react to it. Uh, and I, the final thing I wanna say is that uh, it, during this pandemic, you know, it's all been a shock to us and we've acted and reacted and tried to cope in different ways. And I think if you're in school, uh, you're going to school, grammar school, high school, college, and you have to do things remotely, I just can't imagine um, how hard that would be because, you know, you get to, uh, in adulthood, you've got different systems and uh, it's a different situation. And I think the stress uh, of trying to get through this uh, when you're totally cut off from your support systems and your, your friends and your, your, your fellow classmates uh, is an incredible challenge. And, you know, how do you do it other than trying to express that to some extent through your artistic vision? So I just think that art is, I've always thought, even though I'm not an artist, I have so much appreciation for people who are um, and help through the expression of the world as they see it. Those of us who are not artists better understand the world we're in, better understand the world we're in, the relationships, the communities and ourselves. So I wanna uh, really express my gratitude to uh, the artist, uh, to your parents, uh, and uh, to our judges and to the Vermont uh, uh, College of Fine Arts. Uh, so I'll stop there and just uh, I just want to acknowledge that we've got the Speaker of the House of Representatives uh, who's doing, I think, an extraordinary job and has been a public servant for years and has a, is, a, is a very, very good friend, Jill Krowinski. Jill? Thank you so much, Congressman Welch. It's so great to be here with all of you. I just want to thank all of the work that people have done to put this event together. It's really important, especially this year. I just feel like it's more important than ever. Uh, thank you to the teachers and the parents and the judges um, for your work and dedication towards this. And to every student on this call, we are just bursting 
with pride for all of you. And we are just so excited. And um, I cannot wait to see this art. And I know that Congressman Welch has said that there is a piece that will go to the to Congress, but I would love to find a way to get some of this art into the state house. That would be fantastic. So congratulations to all of you. And I'm so excited to see the art. Thank you and congratulations. Uh, thank you, Speaker Kruinski. And now I'd like to turn it over to President Leslie Ward of the Vermont Council on Fine Arts, who will mention, who will uh, tell us our honorable mention winners. Thank you, Peter. And um, I just want to say it is really an honor to be here today um, at the event and to have the opportunity to address the talented artists who have participated in this year's events and all of your parents, teachers, and friends who have encouraged you along your artistic journeys. Um, it's really an honor because at Vermont College of Fine Arts, we believe the, that artists are essential to a humane and compassionate world, which is why we believe so passionately in our mission to foster the excellence of emerging <clears throat> and established artists. Through our six graduate programs, we nourish artists who deepen their practice as students and are enriched and supported as members of the VCFA community throughout their artistic life. We really believe that arts are central to the human experience and have the ability not only to reflect reality, but to create new and better realities. The art each of you created helps individuals not only know, but viscerally feel the wide range of human experiences. Through your work, the universal becomes personal. Each of your outstanding pieces, and I was so impressed with them, is a portal to new understanding, propelling your viewers into a more intimate way of being in relationship with the world and with each other, opening doors to empathy and understanding across divides and distances. Some of you may have already decided that art will be your chosen profession and you will pursue it from here on out. For others, art may just be something you keep alive as a side hobby as you pursue other interests. At the Vermont College of Fine Arts, we believe the artist lives in all of us throughout our lives and that entering into a deep study and practice can happen at any age. We have students that range between their 20s and their 70s. So whether you see yourself as a professional artist or not, keep envisioning, keep creating, keep expressing your truth. The world needs your creativity. And if and when the time is right, VCFA will be available to you as a place to develop your voice and be in a supportive community with other artists who want to learn and grow. And now it is my express pleasure to announce the honorable mention recipients. And I think we're gonna start with the county awards and I'll wait for Rebecca to put up on screen. Um, the, the piece of art. So the first recipient from Addison County is uh, the artwork Nosy by Carissa Livingston. From Bennington County, Portrait of Brianna Taylor by Jaden Bosch. From Caledonia County, COVID Blues, Kate Vogan Schinter. From Chittenden County, Scream by Emma Baldwin. <laughs> From Franklin County, What's Left Behind, Abigail Dixon Bowles. From Grand Isle County, The Eyes Have It, Nicole Conico. From Lamoille County, Basin by Violet Martin. From Orange County, Self Portrait by Sarah Sprague. From Orleans County, Dog Days by Mary Lovegrove. From Rutland County, Monsieur Lapidatra by Milo Piovana Marcat. From Washington County, What Keeps Me Inside by Emma. Neff. From Wyndon County, Ezra by Riley Rice. And from Windsor County, 
The End by Madeline Trimpey. And now the honorable mention, Judge's Choices. Judge's Choice Contemplation by Marcella Milne. Judge's Choice Night Star Trails by Morgan Frank. And the final Judge's Choice Pride by Jaden Crowder. Congratulations to all the honorable mention choices. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, those are those are magnificent, really, really wonderful, uh, President Ward. And now Vermont artist Susan Tier will announce the third place winner. Susan. Hi, everybody. So nice to be here. Um, I have the honor of announcing the third place winter, a winner, and the piece is titled Sonder by Isabella Ingenieri. So I am so excited to talk about Isabella's artwork um, titled Sonder. She has described her work as a grayscale surrealist self-portrait accented with organic shapes and lines of a primary color palette. It's a unique image that has stayed with me since I first saw it and will continue to because of its complexity, the original and combination um, use of mixed media, the dreamlike elements and various dualities. The gaze is mesmerizing and calming. The hollow body appears thin and somewhat frail. The weighted head is slightly tilted and firmly in place, even though it rests on ribbons of flowing primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. She appears unfazed. The colors come from the internal and they find their way to the external. The color shapes are geometrical and flat. They're smooth, curved, soft edged and thoughtfully placed on her face and head. The patterns of the primary colors never mix as primary colors are often associated with. They are overlays subtly mimicking her body and facial features. Um, there's a suggestion of gentle movement combined with a pause. And of course, there's this beautiful combination, um, that two-dimensional color design that's carefully placed on top of this beautifully detailed grayscale portrait. So I go back to the gaze. It's where I start and where I end with this piece. I'm reminded of portraits of Frida Kahlo. The hollow figure detached from the neck and head are reminiscent of portraits by Rene Magritte. The colors and organic shapes remind me of one of my favorite Spanish artists, Moreau. So I believe Isabella's title is a significant part of her intention in the making of her work, Sonder. I had to look it up <laughs> and what I read gave me more insight to her visual expression. So the definition is, it's the realization that each passerby is a living thing as vivid and complex as your own. So I go back to the gaze and I know that I can and want to look back. So I am going to pass this along to Colin and Vanessa. We all agreed that we felt we wanted to say something about each, um, each winner. And um, so we get to talk three times. So I'm gonna pass it over. I'll, I'll give it to Colin if you're ready and, um, and then to Vanessa. Thank you and congratulations, Isabella. Thanks, Susan. I think one of the things that was most striking to this piece uh, to me as a designer is the use of these organic shapes and primary colors uh, that, that bring my focus away from the delicate grace and the excellent grayscale execution momentarily and then allow it to snap back. So it keeps my eye moving um, from, from one set of features to the next. 
And I, I love the way that this yellow color block mimics the line of the cheekbone, that the three circles um, move into the, the area where the mouth would be. Um, it's just, it's, it's fascinating trying to figure out exactly what these ribbons of color are. It, it provokes a lot of thought. Um, I think it's notable that in all three of our top three selections that there were commonalities between the three judges' selections uh, that made these decisions both very hard and very easy. So, Vanessa, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Colin. Um, and I also wanted to just lift up something that Congressman Welch said so beautifully that it's a brave emotional step to be an artist and to put yourself out there in your work and um, just want to say how much I respect each of the artists um, of the next generation for doing so. Um, and with Isabella's work, I, like Susan, found so much mystery in this piece. I found a slight androgyny to the figure and this kind of mysterious fluidity, which I feel is such a beautiful, pow powerful strength of this next generation. Um, the technicality of the illustration is flawless. It's scarily flawless in the best of ways. And I love how the piece references surrealism, yet also feels very fresh and contemporary. So great, great job, Isabella. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Susan, that was beautiful. Um, in uh, the second place, the winner is gonna be announced by Colin Bright. Uh, Colin? So our, our second place winner, I am very pleased to say is Rachel Lynn, piece titled Labeled. Uh, this is a, a really striking portrait. And I, I think it's so striking because it demonstrates a combination of both exceptional technical skills and being able to, to create this beautiful image, but also carrying forward a strong social, social message. Um, and I, I think that the combination of, of these two strengths aren't just the mark of an exceptional student of the arts, but are the mark of an exceptional artist. Uh, there are a number of very intentional decisions that I think contribute to the success of this piece. Uh, the decision to concentrate detail on the portrait's eyes and on the message, my race is not a virus in the center, uh, keeping that really crisp uh, and very clean and then allowing the focus to start to fuzz out and dissipate as we move back. Uh, kind of keeps us locked on the humanity that's portrayed in those eyes and on the, the plea for humanity that's conveyed in that message. Uh, the, the intensity of the subject's gaze is another thing that keeps drawing me back in. Uh, the technical skill that's demonstrated through the painting of those eyes um, keeps me engaged in a way that, that makes me feel like there's two-way communication happening. When my eye starts to wander away from that uh, very strong detailed work in the center, uh, the, the soft focus that's been brought to the rest of the image allows me to take those, those bits of information in, um, the derogatory and hateful uh, nicknames as it were for COVID. Uh, they, they grab my eye for a second, but then I'm brought once again back to that gaze and, and back to that strong central message. Uh, and then the, uh, the last piece is the, the tiny, crisp, small type um, that's recounting episodes of racially motivated, hateful action uh, that because of their size and because of the, the fine granular level of detail there pulls me totally to that one piece of information. But because it's so small, uh, it doesn't distract from the overall composition and the, the central message that I keep coming back to. I'd say overall that, that this piece is just exceptional in the honesty and the vulnerability and the earnestness that are shown here and demonstrates really significant forethought both in the concept and in the execution. So Rachel, you should be immensely proud of the level of sophistication that you've achieved here and the clarity with which your message is conveyed. Uh, and I think that this, this art is going to serve as uh, a great testament and document to a very ugly truth about um, some wrong that still exists in our culture today, but it does so with a grace and a beauty that is lacking in a lot of public discourse. So congratulations and thank you for sharing this with us. And Susan, I'll send it over to you. Okay, so, oh, Rachel, your, your artwork is 
bold, brave, and powerful. Um, you know in your artist statement that uh, labeling is often reduced to one word, but in contrast, your, your artwork speaks volumes. So the, you, your use of uh, mixed media wallet, watercolor and the news headlines come together to create a strong visual voice that I hope that you keep and, and remain doing what you're doing. You're sending a direct and important and meaningful message. So thank you and congratulations. Vanessa. Um, I find this piece a strong and heartbreakingly tender work of art um, for all the reasons beautifully uh, illuminated by Colin and Susan. Um, one thing I love about it is that it's directly challenging folks' disbelief in equality or equanimity at this moment in time. It's confronting it. Um, I found the use of text very, very strong, and I don't always land at that text can be a detractor for works at some point, but not in the case of this piece. Um, in this case, it's a weapon of truth. And this piece lifts up that the only way to move forward into the future, the future that your generation, Rachel, is inheriting, um, is to reckon and deal with the past and present. To not turn our collective gaze away from the systemic oppressions that are happening at this moment and in the past, um, but to face them head on, just like this young woman is doing in this piece. And may we all rise to this challenge. It's beautifully, beautifully done, Rachel. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now, uh, we go to Vanessa, we, we, yeah, you're going to tell us the first place winner. Yes, thank you so much. I'm very, very honored and excited to um, say that first place goes to Selfie Mirror, which is a photograph by Passion Mui Belecha. When I first saw this photograph um, by Passion, I first my jaw dropped to the floor, so I had to lift it back up. And I thought that this is a piece that responds to what it feels like and looks like to be alive in this very moment. Um, this is a photograph that I could be turning the pages of Aperture Magazine, which is a photography magazine and see it. And it would be, um, I would not be surprised to see this there. Um, when I look at this, I think about the power of representation in visual art and the power of either negative or positive imagery to influence perceptions of oneself and others. This is a piece um, that moves the dial and challenges narratives that uphold racist and gendered ideologies. It's a breathtaking, courageous, and I believe transformative image. It is both strong and vulnerable. It holds those dualities. Um, when I look at this portrait, I think of the portrait photography of the Life Magazine photographer, Gordon Parks, and also contemporary photographers, Deanna Lawson and Latoya Ruby Frazier. Um, this is an image that is so very rooted in the photographic portraiture tradition and at the same time feels fresh and timely, which I think um, all three pieces had, had that in them. Um, for example, the iPhone and the light, that's a timestamp, um, a timestamp of this moment that we're living in. Um, some other elements that I was drawn to was the placement of the ring on the index finger which is the power finger, um, the tiara or the crown, um, which the young woman is wearing, referencing regalia, the inclusion of the plant, um, the body position of the young woman, which feels strong yet also somewhat distanced, um, which is also compounded by the gaze of her. I'm transfixed by her. I wanna know what is she feeling in that very moment? Does she feel strong and in her power? I hope that she does, but what is her story? Where was she before this photograph was taken and where is she going after? Um, this image reads as so very right now, speaking to this moment that we're living in, in our state, in our nation and around the world as global citizens. This complex moment, the, the next generation 
um, is inheriting, that this young woman is inheriting, that Passion and the other winners and all of the 160 artists are inheriting, um, having to enter the halls of adulthood during a time when even the adults are experiencing something for the first time and figuring it out um, as we go. Um, this is a piece that I hope to see printed large format. Uh, it values the dignity of the human being and is also just so, so very beautiful. So I wanna say congratulations, Passion. I look forward to following your career and your artwork and I'll pass it on to Susan to say some more words. Oh, thanks, Vanessa. It was great. So well said. And um, I just, I love this image and I'm glad that Colin and Vanessa brought this image to my attention and I immediately knew why. why. And, um, and it's really interesting to live with the work and look at it over and over again, because you start to relate to what the image is, is saying. And to me, it made me feel like it is exhausting what you know, what was written in the artist statement about our phones and they will continue to be exhausting. Um, and, but they have been and are our connection to the outdoor world, um, especially during the pandemic. Um, and this woman is placed in this pristine studio setting, um, telling many stories that we could all imagine and that we could respond to, describe, and then we look at ourselves and what kind of stories do we have within us. And the irony here is, and then such an original idea is that because even though the phone connects us, it's an isolated moment, it's quiet. And the phone is actually just her mirror. So again, something else for us to contemplate as people in response to the work. And um, also her, I find her facial expression and body language um, showing weariness and that encompasses for me the past, present and future and so much of what Vanessa touched upon. So congratulations. And, um, and I also wanna say congratulations at this point to all the artists um, and to be very proud of all the artwork that came in. And I was very honored to be a part of it. Thank you. Colin. All right. Uh, you know, Vanessa and I both had this rise to the, the top of the list, and I think for very similar reasons. Um, I'd like to share just a couple of their points that, that were really uh, very powerful to me. One is just the, the incredible casual power that is demonstrated uh, in this, this young woman. Uh, and a, another strong part to this piece, I think, is that we're invited into the scene. Uh, it would not have the same strength and power were it just the selfie that was taken by that iPhone, but the fact that we're brought into the process. Uh, and then the, the technical merits that are, that are on display here in lighting a scene with a light inside it. Uh, this is a, a very technically difficult image to produce. And then the, the last uh, real philosophical thing that, that I feel about it is that the, the way that the scene has been set with this plant and this backdrop, uh, I think really demonstrates uh, an awareness of the reality that we're all creating inside these tiny one inch by two inch boxes on the computer screens in front of us. You know, I, I know that I didn't have all this stuff up on my wall before COVID and I had to start inviting people into my studio every day. And I, I think that this, this speaks to that same uh, construction of the reality that we're displaying to the world all the time uh, in some really beautiful and powerful ways. And I, I'm immensely grateful to have had the opportunity to study this beautiful image for the last few days uh, and to look through the other 160 pieces through the last few weeks. It has been an immense honor and I am just floored by the talent that apparently is surrounding me everywhere. So keep doing it. This is awesome. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Colin. Um, you know, the, the works are beautiful but listening to each of you, the judges, <clears throat> describe what you saw in them, uh, what you saw with what was represented, how you described it, but also putting it in an artistic context and putting it in the context of the lives we're living, uh, each of us now, uh, was uh, just a wonderful experience. Uh, I, so I wanna thank uh, Susan, Colin, and Vanessa uh, again. Uh, for all the effort you put into taking so seriously these artworks uh, in making the very, very difficult uh, decisions about who was going to receive the awards. 
Um, so from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for the artistic lives that you're leading and helping us find our way as Vermonters. And of course, I want to thank all of the students. I'm going to turn it back to Rebecca, I think, who has a, 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 an announcement. Rebecca? Hi, yes, thank you. And it's my pleasure to announce um, that all of the winner's artwork and all 160 pieces of artwork that were submitted um, will now go live on Congressman Welch's website. So if you want to see all of the pieces, um, you can go to Congressman Welch's website under services and then art competition. So services and art competition. Um, the display is really spectacular. So thank you so much. And Congressman Welch, I'll turn it back to you to um, make closing remarks. Well, it's bittersweet. Um, you know, normally when we're together uh, and we get so excited about seeing the works and when I get so excited about meeting the artist judges uh, and the three that we have are so articulate and obviously committing so much of their lives to artistic expression, we get a chance to have a cup of juice or coffee uh, and mingle and uh, and, and uh, get to know one another. And it's always been a, a really, really a thrill for me uh, to be able to do that. And now I, <laughs> I feel enormous frustration because I so enjoyed seeing the works that were chosen. I so enjoyed the descriptions uh, of those works from our uh, judges. Uh, that to say goodbye right now is very frustrating for me. So I hope along the way, uh, I do I get an opportunity to meet the artist uh, and our judges, uh, but I'll finish where I began. And that's with just a heartfelt thank you to the students throughout Vermont uh, who are navigating on their own. I mean, you have, none of us have faced uh, a pandemic like this in a century here in this country. And there's no roadmap for how to get through it. And being uh, high school students, there's no roadmap for you. You know, your older brothers, your older sisters uh, can't tell you how they did it when it happened to them. This is all something you've had to figure out on your own, oftentimes in isolation without the supports of your friends. And uh, I, I just want to salute you for that effort and applaud you for uh, having the uh, the, the, the will, uh, the vision, and the generosity of spirit uh, to create these artistic works, uh, and then the emotional uh, bravery to display them and have them be commented on. Uh, it really matters because each of us is trying to find a way to get through this world we're in. It's fairly confusing these days. And the best way to get through it is to express what you see and to try to help others along the way. And that's the final thing I do want to express to the judges. The way you commented it was so intelligent. It reflected your consideration of the context on, of the world we're in, the artistic world we're in. And uh, your comments about the art was so specific uh, and uh, constructive uh, that I learned a lot. And I can only imagine how helpful it's been to the artist on whose work you are commenting. So thank you all very much uh, for participating in this wonderful uh, tradition of the Vermont Arts Competition that was started in this country by our very own uh, then Congressman Jim Jeffords from Rutland, Vermont. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>